Can't imagine there's very many of these. This is the first one I've ever seen. It's uh, really 21st century manufacturing at its best. I really didn't have any worries. Getting from point A to point B has never felt more like the complete alphabet. It's not every day, every month, every year that a company requests shipment of a 112-ton machine. But it's a project Middletown's Compression Systems Module Center, or CSMC, has been working on for three years. Greg Tracy is general manager for CSMC. What you're looking at right here is the largest section of a linear friction weld machine. This happens to be the base. It's about 112 tons. In total, this machine is probably on the order of 200 tons in size and uh, in weight. A mammoth machine of this magnitude isn't just something one orders on an internet site. Pratt & Whitney worked with South Bend, Indiana company MTI to create the linear friction welder for a specific purpose. The linear friction is rubbing two pieces of metal together very quickly to create heat and then compressing it with force so that it bonds together. It makes a much stronger bond for the metal than a weld does. It's going to help Pratt & Whitney overall, the linear friction weld machine, really by creating the capacity we need to make the parts to support the ramp that's taking place both on the military side with the Joint Strike Fighter as well as on the commercial side with our uh, NGPF product line. If you look at an engine and you see the fan spinning in the front that pulls the air in, that's what this machine makes. But a machine designed to make futuristic flying parts needed a BC rather than an AD method of transport to get across the country. Wheels. Lots and lots and lots of wheels. I'm told this is the largest tractor and trailer in North America. Longer than an Airbus A320, heavier than four Airbus A320s, the giant truck left Indiana the start of May and was eastbound and down 19 axles spinning. It got here by a very uh, varied route. If you look at MapQuest and you say South Bend, Indiana, Middletown, Connecticut, it's about 800 miles straight shot. That's not how this machine went. It's obviously very difficult to move something this size across a number of states. Five states had to permit the load because of the weight. It's traveled at night most of the time, um, so it's taken a lot of back roads to get here. Came up 84, onto Route 63, to Route 68, to 17, to Main Street Extension, to Saybrook Road, onto Aircraft Road, and I think it arrived here about 2.30 in the morning. The arrival of the truck and the load it was carrying was met with great excitement, as this was another example of the company's multi-million dollar investment in next-gen manufacturing. Frankly, with the growth that we see in the company, uh, there's, uh, this is just the beginning of, of a very bright future. This has been a tremendous experience for me. I couldn't ask for a better opportunity or, or a company to be a part of, so I'm uh, very proud of the accomplishments we've made here in, in compression systems. The long, slow journey from the Hoosier to the Nutmeg State was but another step in this process. Cranes were needed to unload the colossal device into Building 220, where a hole deeper than most swimming pools was waiting. We had to you know, take our time, it had to take out over 1,200 yards of dirt to prep the hole and then form it for it and put everything back in. So it was, a, it was a lengthy process, but we got through it. The time it took to get the LFW to Connecticut is but a fraction of the time it will take to install. Point B from point A is just a stop, and stopping is something not too common around these parts. It's not over yet. This is another milestone in the project. Oh, it's not over. This is really just the beginning. 